Well, hello, Internet. Some of you guys have asked me to create a JavaScript paint application using Canvas. And so in this video, I'm going to do just that. Over a couple videos, we're going to create a completely working paint application. And this tutorial is going to largely be based off of how much you guys want me to do. If these videos average over 10,000 views, I will continue adding to the functionality that you see right here. So basically, we're going to be able to use a paintbrush. We're going to be able to draw lines. And you can see that they have the rubber band effect. We're also going to be able to draw squares and circles and ellipses and polygons. Also, we'll be able to save our drawings as well as open up new images. Like always, all the code is going to be available in the description, and this is going to take a couple videos to make, and I have a lot to do, so let's get into it. All right, so what you can see here is I created three different files, jstut7.html, mainstyle.css, and jstut7.js. And I also went ahead and created a couple images that I will make available also in the description so you can download them. They'll be used for the toolbar. I went ahead and laid out the basics of HTML. You can pause your screen and type this in, or you can go ahead and download the code. It's all free, of course. So I just went and I have a style sheet. There's mainstyle.css. And also I have all of my JavaScript code. And then inside the wrapper, I'm going to start creating my toolbar. So what I'm going to do here is create a div. And I'm going to give it the class name of toolbar. And then I'm going to create a bunch of links inside of it. So I'll have this be class is equal to selected and then in the HTML I'm going to change the background color based off of what tool is selected. I'm going to reference nothing in this situation. I'm going to then give it an ID that is going to be equal to open for opening files. I'm going to attach an on click event that is going to call a function called open image and everything is going to be largely function based. And then inside of it, I'm going to pay, put a reference to my actual image. And like I said, that this image is available in the description if you'd like to get a hold of it. So open dash icon ping. And then I basically have to do this for all of the different parts of my toolbar. Just going to come in here and copy that. I'm going to get rid of the class here in this situation. I'll show you how to add the selected in the code later on have to change this to save on click this is going to be save image and save icon and then I'm gonna have to create a whole bunch more of these the next one's going to be brush in this situation I'm going to call the same function over and over again for all of my tools and it's just going to be called change tool and then inside of it I'm going to pass in a string and that's going to tell that function which tool was clicked on change this to brush icon and then let's copy this. The next item is going to be line. Pass in line to our change tool function. And then this is going to be line icon. The next item is going to be rectangle. Rectangle and rectangle. Circle, circle, and circle. Ellipse. And it's kind of fascinating what you can do. You could add filtering effects and do all sorts of other things. Just, I mean, just about, you can pretty much recreate Photoshop almost using Canvas. So it's an extremely powerful tool. Polygon and polygon and polygon, and then we're done. Okay, so that is the end of the toolbar. And I'm going to throw a break statement in here. And then I have to have a link at the bottom of the screen so that when the user goes and clicks that they want to save the image, they can click on that and then download it. And I could do that with a button, but... I don't know, I just decided to do it with a link at this time. Of course, for homework, you could go change it into a button very, very easily. So I'm going to put that inside of a div. And then again, it's just going to be a basic link that's going to point at nothing at the beginning. And then we're going to go in there with code and change it. And the ID for this is just going to be image file. And we're going to set it up so that they download the image instead of opening it in the browser. And I'm going to give it the name of image ping. And then I'll just go download image and that's it for the HTML. So pretty simple. Now what we're going to do is jump over and with CSS styling, set everything up. What I'm going to do here first is add styling to my wrapper. I'm going to set its max, its max width to 900 pixels, just 
because and I'm going to set its margin to auto so that it centers the font family of everything inside of it is just going to be Arial. Move on to the toolbar. And if you're new here, the dot here is going to reference the fact that this is a class. And whenever we use IDs, we're going to use a hash symbol, which you're going to see. So the toolbar styling, I'm going to set the width on that to 100% so that it grows. I'm going to set our background color default to like a grayish color. Overflow, I'm going to set that to auto. And that just defines what happens if the items inside of the toolbar get shrunk down. And we're also going to do some other styling here. I'm going to say that I want to reference the links inside of my toolbar. And I'm going to float all of those left. I'm going to divide up my total screen space so that they take up 11% of that screen space. Text align, I'm going to set to center so that they align inside of our sort of create simulated buttons. Going to add some padding to this. I'm going to have it be six pixels and five pixels. And that just means that there's going to be padding on the top and bottom of six pixels and on the right of five pixels, right and left, obviously. Let's add a transition effect so that as these simulated buttons change, we're going to put like a little bit of a pause in there. I'll just have it be half a second. All right, so we got the individual buttons inside of the toolbar styled. And now let's go and add like a hover effect. So I'm going to say toolbar and our link. And whenever we hover over them, I want to change the color. I'm going to change the background color to black. And I think that's good enough. And what else do we want to add? Let's add all oh, this selected whenever an item is going to be the selected tool we're going to change the background color on it as well and the javascript we're going to go in there and change that color and let's just have that be black now i'm going to target the canvas and it has an id so that's why i'm using the hash symbol again i'm going to define its width as 100 percent so that it grows let's throw a border on it just so we can see where it is on the screen and i'll make it solid and then i'll also make that black and I think that's enough for that now let's target the image data div and that's where the link to the image is going to be if we want to download it and let's have that be 100% again let's define its max width equal to 900 pixels and let's give it a height of 200 pixels another thing we can do is with the individual images inside of the toolbar if we want those to automatically resize as well we can do that so i'll go toolbar again and here are the images that we're targeting so these guys right here these individual images as you can see we're using toolbar and then the link and then since the image is inside the link that's what we're pointing at these guys and we can have our max width be equal to 100 percent and then have our height be equal to auto all right so now we have all that set up let's go look at what we have done and here you can see everything except the canvas is missing so let's go fix that and somehow i forgot in a canvas tutorial to drop my canvas inside here so let's go and create that go canvas and the id once again and it is image data div and it has an id of my canvas and I'm gonna define its width directly inside of here. Let's have it be 600 and its height also be equal to 600. And that's all we need to do. All right, and now you can see our canvas. So we have our toolbar and these don't do anything obviously yet and how they change and then the canvas as well. And then I'm also going to have to remove selected from this whenever we click on these other buttons. All right, so cool stuff. And now I'm gonna jump over and start writing some JavaScript. All right, so to start off a project, we have to think about all the things we're going to need. So if we, we want to work with Canvas, obviously we are going to have to have a Canvas reference. Also, we are going to have to use a context, which is going to provide all the different functions that are going to be used for drawing and working with the Canvas in general. So I'm going to get that. I'm also going to, each time I go and use a tool, I am going to need to redraw the canvas. So I'm going to want to store and, you know, preserve 
all of the previous drawings. So I'm going to call this saved image data. I'm also going to have to constantly monitor whether the mouse is being held down or not and drug so that I know when to draw and when to stop drawing. So I'm going to also throw that in there. I'm going to have a stroke color, which I'm going to set to default for black. And if I need that, I'm also going to need a fill color, which I'm also going to set for black. And this is just me just using common sense about what sort of things you need if you're trying to make a paint application. Line width, let's go ahead and capitalize that. And I'm gonna set that to two. If I'm drawing polygons, I'm going to need to know how many sides are on the polygons. And let's set that to six. I'm gonna to have to monitor the current tool that I am using. So I'm gonna throw that in there and I'm gonna have that be brush by default. And then I'm also going to need my canvas width, which is gonna be 600. And it's nice to have this at the top so that I can very easily come in here and change this if I want to. And canvas height, which is also gonna be 600. Anything else I'm gonna need? Well, I know I, this might change. I might add things here as the tutorial continues. But one thing I know is I want to simulate the rubber band so that we can draw the different images and they, you know, before I release it, it's going to allow me to move them around. And I'm going to store that in a class object. And I'm going to call this shape bounding box. And what sort of things am I going to need in that? Well, I'm going to create a constructor and it's going to store the top left positions as well as my width and my height. And then I'm gonna to have to be able to accept that information and do the same for top and do the same for width and width and height. And what other things am I gonna to need to do? Well, I'm also going to have to track both the mouse position at all times as well as the mouse down position. So wherever the mouse is clicked originally as well as the position of the mouse as it moves around on the screen period. So I'm gonna go and set classes up for those as well. Go create a constructor, and this is going to be X and Y. And then I'll just go and store those values. And the one that's going to track the location of the mouse, I'm just gonna call this location, and everything else is gonna be the same. Another thing I'm gonna to need to do is store the different points for our polygons that we create. So I'm gonna go and get that polygon point. And that's also just going to be an X and Y because we're going to store all the points of the polygon and then we're going to draw lines between them. And then I'm going to just go and create things like the shape bounding box and the mouse down positions, those specific objects. How we do that is we're going to go shape and then pay reference to our class that we created up there. So shape bounding box. And I'm going to go and just give those default values of zero to start off and do the same for our mouse positions. So mouse down, again, this is an object. It's gonna store these values and mouse down position and also give those default values of zero and then do the same for the location of the mouse at all times as it moves around the screen and also give that default values of zero. And I think that's the majority. I'm sure there's going to be other different things that come up. And what I want to do now is go and add an action listener. And this is going to, or an event listener, that is going to call a function to set up my canvas whenever the page loads. And to do that, we go DOM content loaded. And I'm going to call that set up canvas. And to finish up this, basically this Part of the tutorial is based up around setting up everything and all the heavy code is going to be covered in the next part of the tutorial you guys said that my videos are starting to get way too long so i'm going to shorten them a bit and then what i want to do is get a reference to my canvas element so i just go document get element by id and the id for my canvas is my canvas then I have to go and create the context again that is going to provide all of the functions for working with the canvas. To do that, you go get context and I'm going to be working in 2D, so that's what that is. I'm going to set the stroke style so that it will be the same across the entire application and stroke color is something that I already defined, which is black. I'm also going to set my line width to be the line width 
that I also set. Now you can see why I use this little weird thing. It's because line width is part of the context. And then what I want to do is create the event listeners that are going to call functions whenever we want to react to the mouse being clicked, the mouse being moved, or react to the mouse being released. And how you do that is go canvas, add event listener, mouse down, in that situation, I want to call a function called react to mouse down. And then I'm going to do that for the other two events that we need to track. And that is going to be mouse move. And then I'm just going to change this to from down to move. And then we're also going to track mouse up, the mouse button being released. And I'll just change this to up. All right, so we covered quite a lot with this tutorial, and in the next part, I'm going to really focus in on the JavaScript code and get everything to work. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this, and like always, please leave your questions and comments below. Otherwise, till next time.